Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is indeed truth, and you lead us by your spirit into all things that are true. Lord, open our minds, open our hearts to, to your word this morning. Use uh, this time of study together to draw us closer to you as your faithful servants. Lord, let us use what, what you reveal to us today in our daily lives, knowing that ultimately you are sovereign, ultimately you are almighty, and ultimately uh, you, have, you have won the victory, and you reign and will continue to reign for all time and all eternity. Lord, we thank you for this time of study, and we lift all of this to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so before we recap, we're going to recap-ish. So um, I just want to start with, with the number seven. So as we're going through, there are so many things that are symbolic, and um, and some of the things I know I've said, we're going to come back, like we're going to come back to the throne room. We're going to talk about the 144,000. We're going to talk about the church militant and the church triumphant. And we will, I, I promise, and it's a lot to cover in today. Today we have two more after today or we have, yeah, we have two more after today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'm glad you all know. <laughs> um, it's a lot to cover, but, but. The reason why um, why we're we're passing over like the interlude in between these um, seals, in between the trumpets, um, in between the censers, the reason is because this um, these cycles, these three cycles of of plagues, these three cycles um, are are covering the same time period. It's covering the time period of the cross till the end of time. We don't know when that is. And so when we're when we're coming back, so when we go through those those first seven um, seals, and then we're going to come back and we're going to study the the seven trumpets today, and we're going to look at the seven uh, bowls or the seven censers, and that's all over the same period of time, um, and and we don't know when it will end, but really it should be a word of comfort because um, because we know as we read in Revelation we know that 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 these are, are set forth the seal is set forth the, the trumpet is blown by the authority of God and so we know that all is still under his command which means that that we do not have to fret and I said last week that you know, as we see, and we're going to talk about the horsemen again really quick here, but as we see these, these horsemen ride and we see everything, I mean, the battle at every angle at, coming at us, um, we know that God is con in control and we know that, um, I mean, Jesus told his disciples, you will suffer. There will be suffering. You will suffer for my name. We know that, that the world hated him and that the world will hate us because of him. He tells us that point blank. So, so it's not a surprise to him. It shouldn't be a surprise to us, um, and uh, and we can we can take comfort knowing that um, that God is still in control, and that um, that nothing is taking him by surprise. So, um, so with that being said, I do want to talk about the number seven really quick. Um, and last year. Uh, Pastor Eibel did a, a series or a, an adult education on numbers, so if you're interested in, in the numbers within scripture, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and, and under the classes, um, classes area, you can, uh, you can find that class um, and so, or that series of classes. But we're going to talk a little bit about the number seven because this is really important. We have these cycles of seven plagues, right? So. So, so Revelation is really, there's a lot of seven that comes up in Revelation. Remember the prophetic message is given to the seven churches. Christ is amongst the seven lampstands, which are the churches. He holds the seven uh, lights, seven stars in his hand, which are the seven angels of the churches. Um, we have these three cycles of of the, the visions um, that John receives, and they're all seven. All of this seven-fold pattern, which if you haven't been to service yet today, you're going to hear a great sermon on pattern, um, but this seven-fold pattern is modeled after those seven days of creation. 
So we have the seven days of creation, and um, and that number seven in scripture is generally reserved for God. The number seven is generally reserved for God, for his holy and complete presence, for his holy and perfect creative activity, especially in relation to the seventh day. On the seventh day, we have the Sabbath, and that is when we have that fullness of rest, the Sabbath rest. Um, there are, uh, we have the, the 21 scenes that were given to John in this presentation. We have, um, we have a purpose, or the Lord gives that purpose of that pattern so that it draws our attention to it, and we can see it. Um, let's see here, da 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 um, the other reason for this sevenfold pattern is because that number seven is reserved for, for God and his holiness and his perfection and his perfect action, um, then we see that revelation itself is from God and it is part of his holy and perfect action upon creation, humanity, right? So, um, so the other thing that we want to keep in mind with, with these seven cycles is that, um, <clears throat> that this has been happening for all, all of our history, right? And we can think of our immediate history, you know, uh, the history that all of us have been alive, you know, in some, I mean, so that history kind of starts earlier for some of us, and, but, um, but, uh, you know, what? <laughs> I just mean that we have some seasoned saints, and that's wonderful. Um, so, so, <laughs> so, um, uh, so, you know, you think about, you think about um, the four horsemen. We're going to go back to the, the horsemen here. Where are we? Okay. So these are that, that first... Um, we have the first seals, and I, I realized something that would might be helpful. I'm going to write down exactly where all of these are in Scripture so we can come back, or in Revelation, so we can come back at any time. So the first four um, are the four horsemen. We have the white horse, uh, or horsemen. We have the red, the black, the pale green. So with the white horsemen comes this, this power grab right? Um, it, through military force, we have tyranny in here. From the cross to now, have we seen power grabs? Have we seen military uh, tyrants? Yes, absolutely. And it's not just a one-time thing. It's continuous because this, this horseman continues to ride all under, all under the uh, the stopping hand of the Lord. The Lord does not let the horseman ride past what he allows. And remember, we have, we have the active will of God and we have the permissive will of God. He permits these horsemen to ride. Um, the, the, they ride uh, as a consequence of sin. Um, they ride as a consequence of, um, of, of the devil having, having his impact on us um, as far as luring us in and so we we get taken in by and I say we it's a general we but even in our own lives you know whether it's in business or with relationships we still can get taken in by the the white horseman um, the second one uh, is is the the what did I write there taking peace from the earth okay <laughs> I did not know what I wrote there. Okay, so taking peace from the earth. Um, and then we have the black horseman where there's famine and scarcity. We have the pale green horseman, which is death and Hades. So all of this, all of this has been happening for history. And it will continue to happen. And we, as humans, we will try to conquer any of this. We're not able to. We're not able to, but we take comfort knowing that the Lord does, the Lord will, that this does have an end. 
it does come to an end. When? We don't know. That is not for us to know, but we do know that it comes to an end. So the four horsemen are in um, Revelation chapter 6, 1 through 8. Then we have the fifth seal, which with that one we have um, the saints beneath the altar. And, um, and we are going to talk more about the saints and the church militant and the church triumphant. But, but they're told the saints are the, the, the martyrs in, in white robes, the white robed martyrs. And they're told to wait, wait and rest a little while longer. And um, this, is, this is the church. This is all who have died uh, in faith, all who the Lord has, has called home to be in his presence in paradise already, um, which that is a word of comfort for us who have lost loved ones. We know that they are currently in Sabbath rest, in full rest in the presence of the Lord. Um, they're not worried about the horsemen that are riding. They're not worried about us, this side of heaven. And um, I know that that's, a, that's sort of this idea that, you know, oh, my, my brother, sister, spouse, whoever is looking down on us from heaven. No, they're not worried about us, which is good, which is good. We don't want our loved ones worrying about us. We want them in that Sabbath rest and peace where scripture tells us that they are. Um, so then we have the sixth, so that's six, um, that's Revelation, that's Revelation 6, um, 9 through 11. And then, uh, then we have the sixth seal, and that's, that's, um, that's the end in its terror. That's the end in its terror. And that's where we hear about the, the mountains falling and, and the people um, terrified and, and, and wishing for the mountains to fall on them so they don't have to face the Lord. Um, and uh, it's, it's scary. It's not scary for us because we know we don't have to hide from the Lord. We know we can't hide from the Lord. It's not scary for us because we, we have been called and claimed and we are already the Lord's. Um, we don't have to hide because we're seen through Christ. Uh, in, our, in one of the readings today, uh, in 1 Peter, he, he says uh, that we are, we have been taken as, or for his possession, for the Lord's possession. We are called to be his people, called as, as, a, as his nation, as his race. So, um, so we're not hiding. Uh, and that is in Revelation 6, 12 through 17. Yes, 12 through 17. So then we have the seventh seal. And the seventh seal is Revelation 8. So you'll notice we jump. So that's Revelation 8. And that is um, 1 through 5. And we jump. So there's an interlude here. And this is where we're going to come back. We'll come back to this interlude here. But here we have the seventh seal. And this is where, um, where the seventh the seventh seal introduces this, this second fold or this second sevenfold vision. So, so we go through the seals, we get to the seventh seal, and it, it's introducing us to bring us back to that point in time, to the cross. And we're going to start over. And we're going to see with the trumpets what's going on. So let's open up to Revelation chapter 8. Okay, Revelation chapter 8. And there are a couple of things that are really cool about, well, there are lots of really cool things in this. So, and I, like I said, we just have so much, so much, and so little time. Okay, so let's go ahead and just read 
the, um, the, the first five verses, beginning uh, chapter 8, verse 1. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Okay, we have to pause here for a second. So, love this silence. Remember in uh, Romans uh, where it says that, that, that you know, all are, all, it's, it's quoting from Psalms and saying that none are righteous, not even one, no one seeks after God. And it says that all will be before the Lord and not a mouth, not a single mouth will be able to speak because not a single person is outside of sin. None of us can stand before the Lord and excuse ourselves or say we are worthy in our own right. All is silent. Okay, let's continue. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and seven trumpets who were given to them. Another angel with a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given a great quantity of incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar that is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. So, so this seventh seal is opening, opening up the next sevenfold. But it's interesting that really we get a little bit of an introduction to both the trumpets and the censers or the bowls. Um, and... Um, and it's, it's really interesting, so notice that the, the trumpets are, held, are handed to seven, seven angels. We have seven angels of the church. The censers are filled with the prayers of the saints. They're filled with incense, with smoke. Very interesting that these bowls are, are uh, filled with the prayers of the saints. And then, and then it says that, um, that the, the censer... Uh, is poured out, um, verse 4, the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And all of the stuff that happens out of that, which we go through in the bowls of wrath, we will see these. Um, but it's just very interesting that it is the, the prayers of the saints and what does the Lord tell us? He says, vengeance is mine. Those prayers of the saints are offered up to the Lord. The Lord, we are promised he will answer our prayers. Part of our prayers are a result of, of the evil and wickedness that's in this world. And so this, this censor or these censors that will be poured out they are mixed with our prayers because our prayers for help, our prayers for um, safety, for security, for health, for, for everything, that's for the Lord to deal with. And we're shown here, he deals. He deals with it for us. Um, vengeance is his, not ours. Okay. So we're going to go with the trumpets. So, um, so our, our, our first four trumpets are in Revelation 8, 6 through 13. Okay. Um, Revelation 8. What did I say? 6 through 13? Okay. Um, thank you for listening. I appreciate that. Um, those are the first four trumpets. And it's pretty interesting. The trumpets... Um, so the trumpets are going to be upheavals in nature. They're upheavals in nature. And we're going to read through these, but notice that the plagues that are introduced in, and ushered in through these first four trumpets, they're really reminiscent of, um, of some of the judgments and some of the plagues that God strikes Egypt with in Exodus. In Exodus 7 through 10, we see those 10 plagues. <laughs> that come upon Egypt through, through the hand of the Lord. And so these, we're going to see, we're going to see a lot of um, similarities. So let's go to uh, chapter 8, verse 6 through 13. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets made ready to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there came hail and fire uh, mixed with blood, and they were hurl, hurried to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned 
up. So let's just take another little pause. Um, the third then is partial. It's not total destruction, but it is partial destruction. So um, every single plague that we're going to read about, it destroys part or a third of the earth. And the destruction of the earth affects humanity. Any destruction of earth is suffering for humanity. So we continue in verse 8. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea creature, uh, a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became wormwood, and many died from the water because it was made bitter. So wormwood is a bitter poison, and it represents the, the bitterness of the human heart, the sorrow of the human heart. Let's go to, keep your hand here in Revelation, but let's go back to Proverbs, which is in the middle of the Bible, um, right after Psalms, just a little bit before Isaiah. We're going to go to chapter 5 of Proverbs, and we're going to read in verse 3 and 4. For the lips of a loose woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. There's the bitterness. It may sound sweet. It may seem sweet. The human heart. We have bitterness, we have sorrow, and it's, it's not good. So um, in Jeremiah, in the prophet, uh, the prophet Jeremiah, he's told by the Lord that, um, that he needs to give the people wormwood to eat and uh, bitter water to drink because of their sin. And then we also learn that God in his mercy and God alone in his mercy can, can make that bitter pure and can make that water um, pure and sweet. So wormwood here is the bitterness, um, the bitterness that we have. So then we have uh, the fourth one. So let's go back to Revelation chapter eight. And we are going to find ourselves in verse 12. The fourth angel blew his trumpet and the third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light was darkened. A third of the day was kept from shining, and likewise the night. Okay. It's not total darkness. Um, in Egypt, remember, one of the plagues was total darkness, and it was to last three days. So there was a time limit on there. There is, um, it's not total darkness, but it's not, there is no time limit on this. So you hear about, we hear those first four, we hear, we hear the plague of, um, of the water being poisoned in Egypt. The, the Nile was turned uh, to blood. Um, we have the, uh, the hail coming down in Egypt. We had the, the hail. We have uh, the darkness. So there is, there's a lot of similarities, or there are a lot of similarities. Um, so then, uh, and we see that in these four trumpets, we see that humanity is made to suffer through judgment upon the earth. In Romans, um, Romans, I think, I'm pretty sure it's chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, it says that, that all of creation groans waiting, waiting for the day of redemption. It is not just mankind that is under the curse of sin or that deals with the curse of sin. It is all of creation. So when the Lord comes again, we have a full redemption. We have a full redemption for his people and we have a full redemption and we're going to get to the end so I don't want to jump there, but um, but that should be a lot of this. A lot of this again. I, I want to emphasize a lot of this. 
what sounds scary really is also good news and comfort for us. Not that, that this you know, horrible stuff exists or is happening, but that it's under the control of God. And that ultimately, as we are going to find, as we read about the saints, those who are in the Lord, we're, we're in the Lord. And we know that the triumph, the victory, ultimately is ours and is for us. So then we have um, the, the fifth and sixth trumpets uh, coming out in, in Revelation 9, 1 through 20, uh, or 1 through 21. Um, fifth and sixth trumpets, and uh, we have the demons coming from the abyss, we have the last battle, then we have the seventh trumpet in Revelation 11, notice again we have these skips, Revelation 11, uh, 15 through 19, and with that we have the end and its joy, okay. So, and there's a reason why I'm kind of, we're, we're going to run out of time, but I want to, I want to write this down so we have the, a chart, and I know you don't know what this is, but that's okay. Um, so then we have, we have the sensors. I'm going to tell you where we can find the sensors. So these are seals. Wait, are these seals? No. Yes, seals. Oh my gosh. Trumpets, and then sensors, or bowls. Okay. So we have the bowls. We've got um, the first five censers of wrath. And remember, these are, the, these are the bowls of God's wrath that are being poured out. Um, so we have the, the first five censers are in Revelation 16, 1 through 11. Then we have the sixth censer in Revelation 16, 12 through 16, and that is um, Armageddon. Then we have the seventh censer in Revelation 16, 17 through 21, and that's again um, the end. Okay. Now, what I want to do is um, I have a chart that we see the cycles next to one another, which I think will be helpful. Okay, so we have the seals, we have the trumpets, and we have the censers. Okay, all right. Um, but before we go there, we are going to go here. But let's go to chapter 16 really quick. Because it's the final bowl, and I just want to read the final bowl. Um, oh, that's the wrong chapter. Okay. Chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. The seventh angel poured his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. And there came flashes of lightning rumblings, peals of thunder, and a violent earthquake such as had not occurred since people were upon the earth. So violent was that earthquake. So with that final bowl, um, we see and we're told that God's judgment, God's wrath upon creation has an end. There is an end. We don't know when it will be, no one knows. Um, and it's not our job to figure out. It's not our job to research and, and try to find because everyone, every generation thinks they're in the end times. Martin Luther was so sure he was in the end times. Paul was sure he was in the end times. I know there have been more than one occasions where um, I have said or other people have said, like, 
we have got to be in the end times. Let's come, Lord Jesus. You know, so it's, but we don't know. We don't know. And it's not for us to know. And that's okay. It's really hard for us to say that's okay because we're nosy and we want to know everything. It's okay. It's okay. We know there is an end. We know we are the Lord's. It's okay. Um, okay, so let's go to the, the threefold or three sevenfold visions. So we have, we have um, the, the seals one through five, and that's in six, one through 11. Um, then we have scenes, whoop, or, or the trumpets, sorry, one through five, and that's in eight, six through nine, 12. And then with the censers, we have um, the, the uh, censers one through five, and that is in Revelation 15, one through 16, 11. Notice the first five of each are lumped together. So, so we get the first five, um, and then, you know, we have some interludes here and there. We're going we're gonna to get to those. But then when we come back and start the cycle over, we're back to those first five. We come back, start the cycle over, and we're back to, to lumping them with first five. So then with this one, there's, um, there's no battle scene with the seals. Uh, with the trumpets, there's the great battle. And that is in 9, 13 through 21. And with the censer, um, there is Armageddon. And that's 16, 12 through 16. Which, you know, we hear about Armageddon and we think it's, and it will be huge, or is huge. But um, that's only four verses. Kind of when I was, when I was, researching, I'm going, that's really not as much as I thought it would be, but that's okay. That's good. Um, so then we have, and that's just a total aside because I can't, I don't filter. So, um, then we have the, uh, here in the seal, we have the sixth seal. So this was the, the sixth trumpet. This is the sixth sensor. Um, so then with the sixth seal, uh, we have the end of the world. And this is in 6, 12 through 17. And then we have the seventh seal. And that introduces the second vision. Um, which that's there. Okay. And then that's uh, 8, 1 through 5. Okay. So here we have that cycle. Here we've got, we do have the great battle. Then with the seventh trumpet we have the end of the world, or end of this world, I should say. And that is Revelation 11, 15 through 19. And then over here, we've had the same thing. We had the, the great battle, Armageddon, and we've got the seventh censor, which is the end of this world. Um, and that's Revelation 16, 17 through 21. We're not going to have three separate ends of this world. We're going to have one end of this world. So we see how it, it just cycles through. Um, all the seals, the trumpets, the censers, all current, all happening at the same time. It's not that we're going to deal with all of this and then go to this. They were given to John in a revelation that was presented in an order, but it's all happening. And if you read John's writings, really, honestly, it's very in line with, with how he writes anyway. John writes very um, spirally. Uh, like if you think of a spiral staircase that you're, 
you're going up and you're covering same stuff and new stuff, right? And you're adding to it. So, so you're, you're continuing over. So that's very, very, very similar, or very, very much how John writes. So we're going to leave the plagues. I'm over the plagues. We're going to leave the plagues. And we're going to go to, um, next week, we're going to go to the, the throne room because I've been, this is not a pun intended, I promise. I've been dying to get there. <laughs> as soon as the words came into my mouth, I went, oh my gosh, this is just, this is a dad joke. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go to the throne room, which I'm so excited to get to that because it's really exciting. And then we're going to also talk about the, um, the 144,000 and the church triumphant and church militant, or church militant, church triumphant. So we're going to... And we're going to find a lot more joy, hope, and comfort um, than talking about the horsemen riding. 